Okay, um, let's get started. Um, so for today's class, uh, we'll talk about generative adversarial networks. So I'm sure you guys um, may heard of this GANs, right? So it has been very popular um, in terms of a generative model. Um, right now, like the, the general model is very uh, popular in a lot of domains, uh, especially right now the large language model, right? So the chat GPT uh, is a type of generative model is able to generate uh, text response or to engage the dialogue. So in the computer vision domain, uh, this generative model is also very popular. So people try to do text uh, gener uh, to image generation, text to image generation, image to image generation, image to video generation. So it's a very important topic and uh, has a lot of cool applications. So, um, and also in the medical domain, uh, GANs has been also used a lot. So let's, um, for this class, let's take a look at GANs and how it is um, applied in medical image computing. Okay. So it's worth to note that, um, so this general adversarial uh, network uh, coming from the Neuros paper, so uh, the first author is Ian Goodfellow, so and his colleagues. So you may also notice uh, this Joshua Banjo, right? So he won the uh, Alan Turing Award uh, with uh, Jeff Hinton and Yang Lacoon. So this paper uh, has a lot of citations now. So this number, um, I think this is like a year ago. So I haven't updated this number. So I'm sure there's gonna be more citations to this paper. So you can see how popular uh, it this again uh, become in various domains. So based on the name, right? So the generative adversarial network, right? So basically, you will see. Um, you can think of this as like a two-player game, right? So essentially, you have a generator, and you also have a discriminator, right? So they compete uh, with each other, trying to win, right? So the generator trying to fake um, some of the data, right, to uh, generate data, right? Um, but the discriminator, on the other hand, uh, is trying to uh, ident trying to distinguish, right, if this is the real data or this is going to be uh, generated data or synthetic data um, by generated by the generator. Okay, and it has a lot of uh, applications. And here, just give you a couple of examples, right? So we can generate um, this kind of face images, right? So actually, uh, these uh, fa face images are all fake. Uh, they are generated by uh, GANs, okay? So, and also we can see that we can um, specify some of the attribute, right? For the generate image, right? Adding a smile, right? So you can see that the image, the face images have been generated or having some of the smile. Uh, on the face, right? So this is one attribute. We can also maybe remove some of the attribute, right? Maybe the original image uh, is smiling, but we can remove the smile uh, from the original image, right? We can also add in some other uh, objects, right? Like uh, glasses, right? Uh, to the original image, and we can also uh, remove the glass. So, and not just the face, right? We can also generate other uh, natural images like dif different objects, right? Dogs, um, dishes, or maybe other objects, right? So from these generate images, um, probably you cannot tell, right? If this is gonna be real or fake, uh, at least for me on the first glance, right? When I look at uh, this, uh, this face images and these images, the dog, especially the dog, uh, the mouse here, right? So I cannot tell, you know, this is a, they, they are the fake image. So you can see how realistic uh, they are. Um, you know, they generate by, by GANs. And we can also do uh, image to image translation, right? So actually, when maybe we are not uh, interested in generate some random image, right? But we wanna generate a certain image, right? So for example, we have a, a label map, right? So. Um, so on the left side, right, we have this different categories, right? Uh, last lecture, we've talked about semantic segmentation, right? On, on the left here is a segmentation map, right? So we have different um, object classes and we want to take this label map and maybe generate the corresponding, um, the, the image, right? Which has this kind of label map. So one specific application is that 
we can using this kind of technique, uh, image to image translation technique to generate a lot of training data, right? Uh, we know that annotating these labels are very uh, expensive, but for some of the uh, gaming engines, right? So um, a lot of gaming engines that you are able to generate these label uh, very easily, right? Basically you just specify what kind of object in the scene and generate these kind of composite labels. And we can using the uh, this GANs approach, right, to generate the corresponding realistic image, right? So then we have a pair, right? So the, the original image and the ground truth label. So in this case, we can effortlessly to have a large scale data set um, for, to train the model to do semantic segmentation. So this is uh, one um, particular example, right? We do image to image translation, uh, label map to the realist image. And we can have other uh, examples, right? Labels to buildings, right? Uh, this vacate here. And also um, grayscale image to color, right? So maybe you have some grayscale images and you want to add in some vivid color to them, right? So we can do this image to image translation using GANs as well. And another, <coughs> the, the input to output. Uh, so we have this input uh, satellite imagery, right? So the output will be the, uh, like the map, right? So this is uh, aerial to map uh, translation. And we also have this day to night uh, translation, right? So we have a daytime image and we want to know, right, what's the corresponding uh, night scenes. Okay, so these the sketch to photo, right? So so the, the list goes on, right? So there's a lot of applications, um, you know, related to image to image translation. And we can also do text to image translation, right? So given a text um, have some descriptions, right? Um, a, this small bird has a pink breast and the crown and the, uh, uh, the black primaries and the secondaries, right? So based on this text input, we will generate, uh, Im generate images that fit uh, this kind of description, right? So these are the, some of the examples um, uh, that is text to image translation, okay? And other applications um, are photo editing, right? So we can edit in the uh, photo, right? So you can have the original input, then we can maybe change the hairstyle or we can uh, add in other attributes like a smile or maybe to change it to a different gender, right? For the person in the image and do the photo blending, right? So we can combine uh, these two photos and to, uh, a single one. So this is a new composite image, right? Which also looks very realistic. Okay. And we can also using GANs to do um, uh, image recovery or image enhancement, right? So we have a, uh, maybe have a low resolution input, right? So this may be uh, taken by some low quality cameras, right? So the resolution is not very high. You are not able to see a lot of details uh, from this facial image, but uh, we can using GANs to generate the uh, the high resolution counterpart, right? So you can see, you merely see the big difference, right? So original, this low resolution, you're not able to tell much of the details of the face, but the generated high resolution image um, has a lot of uh, rich details um, in the image, okay? And we can also do some uh, image enhancement, right? So maybe one photo is taken um, by a long time ago, right? So this may be, also low resolution, low quality has a lot of uh, artifacts or degradation in the image. We can enhance it, right? Adding uh, colors and also enhance the resolution, right? So uh, so as this can be very useful. Um, and not just for image um, task, right? So we can also do uh, video generation, right? So based on a couple of frames, we can predict video frames, right? Predict the future frames. So this is very uh, useful, especially, um, you know, one application is the autonomous driving, right? If we, based on the current uh, video streams we have, if we are able to predict uh, the future, maybe the next uh, two or three seconds of worse frames, right? Maybe we can prevent some of the accident, right? So in this case, um, there's a pedestrian behind the car, right? So this cameras uh, may not be um, may not be able to 
uh, pick up this pedestrian very well, right? Maybe some of the pedestrian detection algorithm is not able to detect uh, this person uh, accurately. And there's a, a risk, right? This, there's gonna be a potential collision. But if we are able to using some generator model, right, to predict the future frames, maybe just, you know, uh, 10 or maybe 30 frames, then this person uh, originally was gonna be occluded by this car, right? So we are able to predict this person is moving towards this direction, right? Based on the predict frames, we are able to uh, detect this uh, person at this time uh, time uh, stamp. Then in this case, a potential collision can be avoided, right? So that's a, a very a good application um, in the uh, autonomous driving, okay? And for the medical image uh, computing, so there's also a lot of uh, applications of using GANs. So um, in this paper, they, they kind of survey uh, a lot of uh, tasks in medical image computing using GANs, right? So have a classification, denoising, reconstruction, uh, synthesis, registration, detection, and segmentation, right? So basically uh, a lot of common tasks in medical image uh, computing have been uh, more or less using GANs to um, to perform um, perform these tasks, and some of them are actually achieve very good result, especially um, like in some of the image processing, like denoising, image generation, or image reconstruction. So at the end, we'll talk about a couple of examples of uh, applying GANs to these medical image computing tasks. Okay. So let's first look at um, the high level uh, idea uh, of, of GAN, right? So the original or the high level idea of the GAN is that we, the input will be a random noise, right? So here Z is a input random noise. And we'll take this uh, random noise and feed that into the generative network. So this general network is nothing but a standard uh, network, right? So it can be, a uh, uh, any CNN architecture, right? So we can using this network and generate uh, the sample, right? And kind of from the training distribution, right? So this can be trying to resemble the distribution of the training data, which contained some of the realistic uh, images, okay? And training again uh, is, can be considered as two player game, right? So uh, the two players are the generator and the other is the discriminator. So the generator network, the goal is to fool the discriminator, right? By generating real looking images, right? So you can think of one uh, example is that maybe, um, you know, take analogy as this generator is art forger, right? Trying to uh, fake or uh, generate some of the uh, art piece um, by maybe some famous artist. And this discriminator network, uh, the goal is to distinguish between the real and the fake images, right? So the role this discriminator play is um, like maybe a FBI agent, right? So you want to, um, you know, trying to detect, right? If this is going to be a real art piece or this is going to be a fake generated by the generator. So this is the, um, the, the architecture of the GANs, right? So here you have this uh, random noise go through the generator to generate some of the fake images, right? For the training purpose, uh, the training data also have to contain some of the real images, right? So in, in this case, we can train this discriminator network, right? Again, this discriminator network can be any uh, network architecture, right? The CN architectures. And the, the task for this discriminator is to do binary classification, right? Uh, to classify if the input to this discriminant network is going to be real or fake, okay? So now we kind of uh, have a idea, right? What are the, you know, objectives of these uh, generator uh, network and the discriminant network? And let's see what's the, uh, the formal formulation, right? In terms of the objective function, right? What they are trying to optimize. So this is the um, objective function uh, for the GAN network, right? So here you can see it actually have this uh, involved with this uh, minimax ob uh, optimization, right? So you have to do the maximization and you also have to do the uh, minimization, right? So maybe in the first glance, this maybe 
look a little bit intimidating, right? So how we are going to uh, do maximization and at the same time also do the minimization, right? So, but actually it's very uh, intuitive and uh, easy to understand. So we can look into some of the details, right? So just for clear uh, some of the notations, so this E is indicating the expectation, right? So because we are sampling data from some of the distribution, right? So this P data means uh, this distribution is corresponding to the realistic data, right? As we mentioned in the before, right? So the training data set also contains some of the realistic uh, images so that we can use that to train the discriminator to tell uh, if the image is gonna be real or fake, right? And uh, we also have another term involved the data sampled from uh, noise, right? So Z is the, the random noise, right? So, and we also have the uh, D is indicate, uh, indicate disc, uh, discriminator, okay? And theta D is the parameters for this uh, discriminator network, okay? We also have another player, G, right? So that's the generator and theta J Theta G is the parameter um, for the generator uh, network. Okay. So let's look at, um, you know, one at a time, right? So here we have minimize and also maximize. It's kind of quite complicated for understand the whole picture. Now, maybe we can just look at once, uh, one at a time, right? So let's look at uh, discriminator uh, first, okay? So in this case, don't worry about this. Um, minimization because this minimization is only focused on the parameter of generator, right? Uh, theta G here. But here we wanna only focus on the discriminator, right? So how we are going to optimize the parameters theta D for this discriminator, okay? So this should be uh, easier, right? So if, because we only focus on one. So if we look at the maximize uh, theta D here, and what are the terms involved uh, theta D here? So actually these two terms, right? This E X um, P data log D theta D and the other term here also have the uh, D theta D here, right? So actually we have to look at these two terms. And remember uh, the goal of this discriminator is we want to, this discriminator once we train it is able to tell, right, if this input image is real or fake, right? Um, so that's the, the job or objective of the discriminator, okay? So here we are using uh, label one, indicating this is a real image, okay? And a zero indicating this is a fake image, right? No, this is the binary classification. And this, uh, the output uh, likelihood will be uh, a value, right? In uh, between zero and one, okay. So the more towards one indicating, um, you know, the discriminant output will predict is more like more likely this is a, a real image, okay. So here, uh, if we look, because this is a uh, term as uh, maximization, right? So let's look at uh, the first term here, right? If you, I plot this uh, log function uh, here on this graph, Right, so because of the uh, the value is within zero and one, right? So these are gonna be uh, all negative values, right? The maximum uh, is zero when the input equals to one, right? So when, when the X equal to one, the log X equals to uh, zero, okay? So that's the maximum value. So in this case, we want this log D theta D X, right, to be, uh, to be zero, right? Because this is the maximum value you, you can get for this term, okay? So if we want this term to be zero, then d theta dx has to be one, right? We could look at the plot here. And this is exactly what we want, right? Because the input is x, which is the real data, okay? Because x is sampled from p data, the real data, okay? And this makes sense, right? Fits our intuition. And let's look at the second term here, right? Again, we are doing maximum, as we mentioned when we were examining this term here. Uh, we, in this case, the log, whatever this in the parenthesis here is also supposed to be equal to one, right? So here we have one minus this term here, which means this d theta parenthesis g 
has to be close to zero, okay? So let's look at what does this mean, right? So this means uh, this D, this GZ is the generated data, right? So G is the generator. Z is our random uh, noise, right? So GZ is the generated data, right? So if D and GZ is going to be zero, that means the discriminator is able to predict uh, this input correctly, right? Because this is actually the fake data generated by the generator, right? So again, this fits the intuition objective, right? So that's the uh, the objective of maximize these two terms and for the discriminator, okay? Now let's look at um, the generator, right? So we look at the uh, discriminator first. Now uh, let's, you know, switch gear and just focus on the generator. So in this case, we don't have to care about the theta D, right? Because that's the parameter uh, for the discriminator. So in this case, we can ignore the first term, right? Because there's no parameters for theta G here. It only has the uh, parameter for the discriminator. So we only have to care about the second term, okay? Now remember, what's the objective for the generator? Right. So the generator is trying to generate some of the image to fool the discriminator, right? So the, the generator image, they want to, you know, fool the discriminator, this should be a real, right? So in this case, if we are doing the minimization here, right? So we want to minimize. So we, again, let's look at the plot here. Uh, this log term here, the minimize should be uh, the the log here should be log zero, right? Because log zero here is the negative infinity, right? So that's uh, that's what we want if we want to have a max minimization problem, right? So in this case, this one minus d theta d uh, g uh, z here uh, should be one equal to one, right? And what does that mean? That means the discriminator predict this general data to be one. So one is the real image, right? So uh, this discriminator mistakenly predict the generated image uh, to be the real. Then again, that's kind of fits the goal objective of the generator, right? Because this generator wants the discriminator to uh, think the generated image is actually the real image, right? So that's the uh, intuition uh, behind these two um, networks and why these have this mini uh, max objective function for these two networks. Okay, so is this clear? Any question? Okay, so let's move on. So once we define these uh, mini max objective function, uh, then uh, in terms of optimization, right? So we do this optimization uh, in our alternative uh, alternative way. Okay, so first we do this uh, gradient uh, ascent on the discriminator, right? So this is ascent because we are maximized, right? Uh, if we are minimized, we are doing the gradient descent. Of course, you can always add a negative sign there and you can do the gradient descent. Um, then once we do this uh, step, uh, optimize the discriminator objective, then we switch to optimize the uh, generator, right? So the generator is the minimize, right? So we can do the gradient um, descent on the generator, okay? Um, but uh, in practice, we can also uh, kind of just you know switch the sign here and using the gradient ascent on the generator, but uh, formulate this into a different uh, formulation. Okay, basically these are the doing the same thing. So either way is fine. And if we put them together, right? So how, what's the, you know, the training process uh, to train the GAN, right? So here uh, is a summary uh, of the GAN training algorithm, right? So we can specify the number of training iterations, right? And we are doing this kind of alternative uh, training process, right? So first uh, case steps, we can sample a mini batch um, of M noise samples from the noise prior, right? So we are using a noise generator. And we can also sample a mini batch of the M examples from the 
uh, data uh, generating distribution, right, of P data. So these are the, the real uh, images. And then we can update the discriminator uh, network, right? So we wanna train this discriminator to, um, to classify if the input uh, either real or fake, right? Generated by the noise. And after we train the discriminator, then we alternate to train this uh, generator, okay? So for the generator, because we, are, we don't rely on the real data, right? So we only uh, sample the a mini batch of the noise sample, right? And we use that to generate, uh, to optimize the generator, okay? So here are a couple of notes here for for uh, training of the uh, these two networks, right? So you can have, you know, every step you do this uh, kind of alternation, right? So for one step you train the discriminator, then you go go to this um, generator, but you can also maybe step uh, specify more steps so that um, the training maybe become more stable. So in practice, uh, there's no uh, specific rule. So you can experiment with different uh, values for the case. And some papers may find if you're using a uh, more step uh, for the training, this may, the GAN training will be more stable. And there's also other uh, follow-up works uh, trying to uh, stable uh, st stabilize the GAN training, maybe using uh, other uh, loss function, right? This. Uh, Westerton uh, GANs, right, using this loss function to stabilize the GAN training. So yeah, so if you're interested, you can look at uh, this paper. Uh, so these uh, uh, Westerton GAN is also very popular, a variant, so uh, have better or stable training. Okay, so after the training, right, so we, we can using the generator to generate images. Okay, so once we train this, Right, the discriminator may not may no longer able to tell right if this image is a real or fake. Then we can using this generator uh, to generate generate image. So the expect output will be images are look very close to uh to the realistic uh, images. Okay. So here I list uh, a few um, uh, resources. Uh, you can uh, look into the details right how to train train against. So because of these two uh, networks and this kind of minimax optimization, so training uh, GAN networks can be very tricky. So you may um, you know, encounter some of the cases that your GAN is not very stable. So uh, the result may be not as you expected. So there's actually some of the tips, tricks uh, you can use to stabilize the GAN training. So highly recommend you go through some of these uh, resources to uh, using some of the you know uh, tips to help you train to train the 